that your kids struggle in your classroom. Many of us feel it's fractions, decimals, but it will come down in most classrooms. Teachers will talk about their kids struggling solving word problems. So typical, so what do we do? We avoid them or we give them buzzwords. Doesn't help. Singapore, although they claim that they didn't invent any of the methods they use, came up with a way to help kids solve model draw or word problems. Their way of solving them was using model drawing. Some courses refer to this as tape diagrams, others as strip diagrams. But let's look at the basics of what they did. So fact one, Singapore kids could solve 87% of word problems that had buzzwords. You know the words that you teach of, multiply, is, equals, altogether, plus, and you think your kids know what they're doing. Well, 87% of the time, their kids did too. As soon as you took out those buzzwords, it dropped to 46% of their kids being able to solve a word problem. What do you think the percentages would be in your classroom if you took those buzzwords out? How can you help? Let's look at what this model drawing is all about. So it goes back to this part-whole relationship. So here we can see one part plus another part will equal our whole. This would be referred to as a part-whole model. We also have models that we can do one part and another part where we compare. And so in this instance, you would stack your bars or the rectangular representations. So young kids will talk about stories. You'll see in these examples stories about making seven. And in this model, you can see students are taking their linker cubes and one by one placing them in their grid paper. They'll shade in the parts, showing the whole, and using a number bond. They'll also transition to using words, so you can see one part and another part would make up the whole. Where does that go in the upper grades? These cubes, which offer one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning one, two, three represents three, move to a rectangular representation. This could mean three, 300, 3,000, depends on the problem. You don't see that same one-to-one -one correspondence. So how do we use them? Let's look at our first problem. We have our usual culprits, spiky and curly. So if spiky has 35 coins, we're gonna use this bar to represent 35 coins. His friend curly comes along and Curly gives him some more coins. So in the problem we're looking at right now, we have Spiky has 35 coins. His friend Curly gave him 19 more coins. And we're asked, how many coins does Spiky have altogether? So if we start with this idea of coins, we can see Spiky's representation of coins. And so shown in our model here. We know that this represents 35 coins because that's the amount of coins that Spikey has. We also know that his friend Curly gives him some more coins. We want kids to represent proportionally what relationship would 19 be in regards to 35. We're looking for students to say something about half, and maybe they'll say a little bit more than half, and you'll see them make their bars or adjust their, their bars to represent a little bit maybe more than half. And so in doing so, we would say Spiky has his 35 coins and Curly's 19 coins, the action of joining, and we could represent that by showing the 19. This would be referred to as a part plus part equals my whole. So we would expect students to write a math sentence to represent the action of joining. And then they would be expected to solve the problem. 
So using the bar model, they can see and comprehend the action of the coins that we started with, the coins that were given. And then how many coins do they have all together would represent the whole. Another situation that we could use bar modeling is, is in a part whole model. So in this representation, we have Spikey has 35 coins. So this bar is representing the whole or the total. We know that 19 of his coins are pennies and the rest are quarters. So in this model, we're moving from the idea of action to the part whole representation. So here we have his 35 coins and then we know that part of these coins, 35 is the whole, part of these coins are pennies and the rest are quarters. We know that 19, so again that proportional reasoning, 19 would represent the pennies. So I'm just going to write pennies. Kids might just put a P in there. We know that this represents the pennies and this amount is 19. So we're looking for the amount that represents the quarters. So as always, students are re required to give the math sentence. The whole minus the part I know, the 19, will give me the part that I do not know. So in this situation, the bar was used, the bar model was used to represent the total amount of coins. The coins were broken up into pennies and quarters. Whereas in our first model, we had the action. We started with some and then we gave other coins. The next type of problem that we can talk about with addition and subtraction is the comparative model. Comparative in nature, you would see words like has more than, fewer than, etc. So in this problem, you can read, Spikey has 19 more coins than Curly. So just as we would do with our cubes, we would start our models by what some kids would refer to as stacking them. And so we would have one model and we might stack the other to see the relationship between them. And what we would hope is that kids would say, well, that can't be because here's Spikey and here's my friend Curly. And what do we know? We know that Spikey has 19 more. So you should hear things like somebody's bar should be longer. So whose bar? We know that if Spikey has 19 more than Curly, our, our visual model right now is showing they're the same, then maybe Curly's should get a little bit smaller or maybe spikies should get a little bit longer. Kids can do either idea, add on to make show more or decrease curlies. Now we've got to place the numbers that we're given. Spikey has 19 more, so we can see in this model that at this point they're the same. So to show the more than piece, we would, sometimes we, it's helpful to put it right over, and to use your marker to show this part right here would represent the 19 more. Again, we want to stack those. We very partic are particular about lining up these amounts. And we do that because if these weren't lined up, then kids would have a hard time comparing them. So we can see the 19 and where that goes. What else do we know? We know that Spikey has a total of 35. So we can show that. Now this problem on purpose has no question. So I just wanted to demonstrate that sometimes it's helpful to leave the question out to see if the kids can comprehend what's going on, but then to extend it by asking them, what could we ask? We could figure out how many Curly has, We'll put that question mark A. We could figure out maybe how many they have all together. So we could ask different questions. By leaving the question out, we make kids focus on the model. 
And then we can extend it by asking them, what could we figure out? So in question A, in order to figure out Curly's amount, we would take that 35 minus my 19 to give me what this missing part is, which we've shown is the same. To figure out how many they have all together, we would have to use that amount and add it to the 35. So what we see here is that Singapore, based on the research of Jerome Bruner, decided that if we're born with visual brains, we need to tap into that idea. We need to stop solving word problems with buzzwords and build on the idea of seeing it. They use this bar model to represent a part-whole relationship, a compare, uh, I'm sorry, a part-whole relationship. This also represents a part-whole but a different action or problem structure. And then the comparative idea. So this is model drawing 101 to just describe what a bar model is, how it starts with one-to-one -one correspondence in the younger grades in using cubes, and then it moves to the older grades and we, we see things like the comparative and the part-whole um, model as well.